topic of my presentation will be the new uh, infinite ground planes for RGO feature in 2025. Um, yeah, Gopi already mentioned it and I will now go into details a bit. So um, maybe let me start for those few of you who might never have heard of uh, FICO's RLGO, just a brief introduction so that everybody has an idea what I'm talking about. Um, so the RLGO that stands for Ray Launching Geometrical Optics <clears throat> is a ray-based solver uh, intended for modeling electrically large dielectric and perfect electrically conducting structures in applications such as lens antennas and radar cross sections. So I'm very good at reading, as you see. So the RGO is formulated for use in instances where electrically very large structures are modeled. So by the way, it says here, um, no, that doesn't matter, okay. <laughs> RLGO is uh, well suited for, especially I would say RCS problems, that's what I see it mainly and also where it's used a lot is for ray dome um, analysis or ray dome simulations, um, especially when you have multi-layer ray domes, um, arbitrary number of very thin dielectric layers, and then it's very wise to use the RLGO solver. Uh, what it basically does, it takes everything from the from the MOM world, method of moment world, so to speak, so whatever structure you have with uh, solved with method of moments, each of the um, edges and also each of the segment connection points is considered a radiating source for the RGO. And from each of these points, ray tubes are launched, um, which are about to hit the RGO geometry. And where they hit, they will create Huygens sources, which will then basically um, represent all of the RLGO parts. That's how it works. Um, so far, so good. So there is a couple of new features for the RLGO in the new FICO. And let me quickly go through them. So one is, for example, here. Um, this is the one that I'm going to talk about. Higher order interactions with PEC, PMC, or homogeneous half space infinite ground planes. So that is a feature that has been missed a lot. Um, now it is there. So then I will also demo it for you in a couple of minutes or seconds. Um, the other new feature would be multiple GPU usage for RGO. Um, in case you have multiple um, uh, GPUs in a system, this can be very helpful, although it is, I believe, limited to to manual settings only. So not everybody knows what I'm talking about with manual settings. So with RLGO, there's, of course, an automatic ray launching algorithm, which makes sure that you do not waste time on shooting rays in, into, into, into empty space, basically. Yeah, so... FICO then um, decides on its own um, where to shoot in a, in a closer distance, so to speak. Yeah, um, But yeah, if you have manual settings, which can happen here and there, then you have um, can make benefit of multiple uh, GPUs. Then um, the last improvement here I want to talk about is the enhancements, en enhancements for complex structures option. So... With RLGO, um, obviously, you will not have very high accuracy typically with small structures or small parts in a large structure. Yeah, very detailed parts in a large structure, they typically are not um, represented um, accurately with, let's say, the classic uh, RLGO. And this now could be enhanced with this feature, which is by default enabled, by the way. So. If you just go for do default, you will probably see improvements if you had problems with that in the past. And yeah, one more here. Uh, that's the um, interaction, ray interactions with curved pack geometry. Also, this is now improved and shows better accuracy. Okay, but yeah, let me go one slide back. So this is really what I'm talking about today. 
the infinite ground planes with RLGO, and I will demo a quick example for you, basically very similar to this one, just a bit simpler to save us time. It's still a ship and a, an infinite sea, a very flat sea surface. And I'm gonna compare it um, with the MLFMM, which is the full wave result, just to make sure we see some decent accuracy here. Okay, let me just start the demo. Here's the FICO launcher 2025. We open CAD FICO. And let's create a new project. First of all, I need a ship. Uh, I will, of course, use the component library for that and see if there's a ship. Yes, very simple ships are here. Let's just take this one. A very simple ship, still quite dangerous. Um, we need seawater. So let me add the dielectric medium here. Well, seawater can have varying properties, of course, but let's go for something classical. Permittivity of 80 and a loss tangent of 0 0.5. I don't like the color, it should be blue. I'm gonna solve this uh, this ship at a quite low frequency. Again, just to save us time, frequency should be 100 megahertz. And this gives us a free space wavelength of, well, I'm so good at typing, of around about three meters, right? And now something basic with the reflection coefficient uh, approximation um, ground that I, that I chose here. This one, yes. Um, it's important that the geometry is not touching it. There has to be a certain distance. That's not something for RLGO, that's a general rule with this method. And the distance should be uh, lambda divided by 10, so let's do this. And let's go to the minus direction. So just make sure we have this, this tiny distance here between ship and ground so that we don't get tons of warnings from FICO. You know, FICO loves warnings, right? Um, okay, <clears throat> so right now this is a ship on an infinite sea surface, but the solver would be method of moments. So that's is, this is not what we want to do. Method of moments will take quite some time with this one. You see the measure is now happening and uh, you see already by the time it takes how many um, triangles this will mean. So I'm not gonna do this with method of moments, right? I did this in the morning with Evel of Mem that is easy to do. What we are gonna do is use RLGO. So how can we apply RGO to a geometry? We apply it to the faces of our geometry. Oops, sorry. Uh, so let's select all the faces here, right click, go to properties and then go to RGO. And the first thing you see is meshing is quite fast because the RGO does not need a frequency dependent mesh size. Uh, it meshes the geometry as, as coarse as possible. And also you see here we have curvilinear triangles with RGO by default. So yeah, let's just go with this mesh. And one thing is missing, that is a source. So let's choose plain wave source. I'm gonna calculate the RCS, monostatic RCS of this guy. And I want to have, let's say, just very flat above the ground, just to show you that it will not affect the result a lot. Um, one degree, something like this, or so 361 directions. You see that the plane wave is basically coming more or less parallel now with the infinite sea surface. And this will not really have a tremendous impact on the result. I will show you the results uh, at the end, so for better understanding. But for now, um, that should be it. All I need to do is save it and run the solver. 
Let's see if it, oh, that's a totally wrong folder here. Let's go somewhere else. Here's good. Go with the Farfit request and for monostatic mono RCS, um, what you would do is this setting here, calculate fields and plane with incident direction. So this would give me the monostatic RCS and run the solver. And while the solver is running, we can already open PostFICO and watch the results coming in. Yeah, here we have them. So yeah, what I did, so this is basically exactly what I just showed you. What's that? Um, yeah, RCS um, with the plane wave coming from a theta 85 degrees direction all around the ship with infinite seawater gives us this RCS. For comparison, here you see always the, uh, the RGO result as well as the MLFMM result to check the accuracy. Yeah, MLFMM serves as reference here. So in this case, we see on the left side, no seawater, just free space. And on the right side, we have infinite seawater and the results agree very good. So the effect of seawater is basically more or less not existent. This changes if we have a more, a smaller value basically for theta, like 45 degree now, if it looks like this, if the plane wave comes from above, right? And then the reflection from the seawater really comes into play. Again, on the left side, we have the free space, on the right side, the infinite seawater, and yeah, results are now different. But the most important thing here is that the RLGO results and the MLFM results agree quite well. That is, um, I would say, much better accuracy than with past versions of Pico, to be honest. So this made me, made me quite happy when I saw it. And if you compare the runtime and the memory usage, you see that with the MLFM, um, you have obviously much longer run times, right? And memory usage much higher um, expected, I guess. Um, yes, I think, yes, that's it from my side. Any questions?